Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, and today we're continuing on in our series, Spring to Production. The idea behind this is that we talk a lot about how to build Spring applications, but we don't talk enough about how to get those applications into the promised land, which is known as production. So the idea is simple. We've taken a simple application we're calling Spring Blog. It's a Spring MVC app. It connects to a database. It has the actuator. It has just a few features. And what we're doing is we're taking that and deploying it to different platforms. One, this gives us some visibility into the platforms that are available to host our Spring applications. And two, just kind of seeing how we get things into production. I've mentioned this before, but one of the things I really love about front-end development is the ability to just get something out there. So you can deploy something to the web, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it's very tangible. It becomes very tangible at that point because you can see it, share it, uh, interact with it, and, and that's what I'm really trying to get at here is we're building these applications, let's get them out to production. So today we are taking a look at Heroku. Most of you might have heard of Heroku. Uh, some of you probably already used Heroku. But what I really love about Heroku and some of the other platforms that we've taken a look at is that it takes kind of the ops part out of it and just allows you to focus on building applications. I'm not a DevOps engineer. Uh, a lot of that stuff is confusing for me. I just want to build my app and get it out there. And that is one thing Heroku loves to do for us. Now, I do want to get something out of the way. You'll see down in the middle here, it says the Heroku update starting November 28th, 2022, which is really in a couple weeks at the time of this recording. The free Heroku Dinos, the free Heroku Postgres, and free Heroku Data for Redis are no longer available. So there used to be a free tier for all this stuff. There isn't going to be any more. With that said, I still believe Heroku is a great platform to choose. We'll go into the pricing in a second, but there's still some really great pricing options for you there. So uh, I like to go, kind of go through the website first. Let's take a look at what's available to us. I like this kind of sliding animation that gives us some ability uh, to kind of look at what the features are. The one that really stands out for me is this, and this is what I said before, focus on your apps. Invest in apps, not ops. Heroku handles the hard stuff, all the patching, the upgrading, et cetera. Let Heroku handle that for you. Let's just focus in on building our applications. So we see there's a bunch of officially supported languages down here. So if you're building polyglot applications and you're using things like Java and Go and Scala and Clojure, that's great. Uh, there's also a podcast by the folks who run Heroku. Uh, really great podcast. Uh, I've listened to it for a while called Codish. So check that out if you have a chance. And then uh, you can just go through here and kind of look at all the different features built by developers for developers. Um, we have the ability to scale, uh, code and data rollbacks. The GitHub integration is a big one. We looked at a platform called Railway previously. Heroku gives us that same kind of ability where we can just hook up to a GitHub repo and have it deploy our code for us, which is what I want. Um, there's a Heroku Postgres, so reliable and secure Postgres as a service, easy to set up. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want to like have to manually um, create a database and do all the configuring and patching. None of that sounds like fun to me. So this is right up my alley, and I'm excited to get going. So before we create our application on Heroku, I just want to look at the pricing. Again, because that free tier is going away, it doesn't mean you can't get started for pretty easy. So they have a free and hobby, zero and up per month. Uh, you can choose your dinos. So this is the free tier, which I imagine this one's kind of going away. There's a hobby one, though, with a max of $7 per month. So if you're just like trying to learn something and want to get something out in production, uh, 7 bucks a month, not a bad idea. Um, and then there's pricing on the Postgres side. Again, Hobby Basic, max of nine bucks per month. So for 16 bucks a month, you can have a Spring app talking to a database um, as just a hobby. So, And then as your needs grow, maybe this hobby turns into a business or something that's generating revenue. Uh, you can kind of just scale that up and move that over to a different plan as your needs grow. So definitely worth it, even with the free tier going away. You'll see as we get into this, just the ease of use uh, for services, for getting your project started. So easy to get up and running. Uh, and that's why I continue to recommend Heroku. So with that, uh, let's jump into the admin dashboard and create a new project. 
All right, we're going to start here over on GitHub. So the repository that we're using for all of these different platforms that we're pushing to is uh, on my GitHub repository at danvega slash spring dash blog. If this is your first time here, go ahead and take a look around the repository. Take a look at the application. You can run it locally. There's a Docker compose file to stand up a Postgres database locally and just test it out. Again, pretty simple, basic application. Uh, not much to it, but one thing I want to point out is if we go into source and we go into main and resources, you'll see we have some different YAML files here for configuration, one of which is a prod. So we're going to set the active profile to prod when we go to production, and this is how we're going to configure the data source. Each platform that we're going to, we're using Postgres, so the URL looks the same, JDBC, Postgres, and then we have a DB host port and DB name and db username and password. So we're using environment variables there. We don't want to store that as plain text. That's bad because that would get checked in here to get uh, as plain text and for the world to see. So we're using environment variables. We'll set those environment variables up in the different platforms and they'll get replaced at runtime. I'm also setting the SQL init mode to always. This means that it will grab the schema file in the project and run that for us. So it creates the three tables that we need. Again, not something you do in production, but this is more of a demo to just see it. Like once we get it deployed, we want to see the application up and running. So that's the um, prod side of things. And then if you go into the Spring blog, there's a readme, a whole bunch of information in there. And then there's specific information about each platform. If I need to give you something for that platform, you'll see it here in the readme. The one thing I do want to point out that is specific to Heroku is the system.properties. Again, I'll probably come back to this because without this, you'll come across some errors. We're adding the system.properties file. So if you're creating your own project, make sure you add this and you set the Java runtime to whatever you're using. Because we're using Java 17, I'm setting the runtime to 17. This will tell Heroku, hey, this is the runtime you need to use. Without it, it will default to whatever the default is. I want to say it was 8, but now I'm thinking it's 11. Um, so whatever the default is, it's going to run on that. And then if you are trying to use 17 and the default's 11, you're going to have some problems. So you'll need this system.properties uh, to be able to run this example or run your own example on Heroku. All right, so with that, I am logged into the Heroku dashboard. I have no projects here. I'm going to create a new app. So I'm going to click Create App. We're going to give it a name. So this name needs to be unique. So I'm going to say Dan Vega slash blog, and that looks like it's available. Where in the, which region are we going to choose? And then I'm going to go ahead and create that app. Okay, so we have information about the pipeline here. Um, what I want to do is check out the deployment method. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to connect to GitHub. And once I do that, it'll ask me to search this repository. I'm going to look for a spring blog. And we're going to search, and there it is. So I want to connect to that specific repository. And now, as you can see, we have some information here about automatic deploys or manual deploys. So just like we did in another application platform like Railway, you can enable automatic deploys, which is really great. So you could say, hey, anytime something is committed to the master branch, I want you to go ahead and create a new artifact from that, deploy it, and let's get this new code out into production. This may be your desired effect. It may not be. Um, so you have to opt into this. You have to say, hey, I want to enable this. Or you can do a manual deploy. You could say, hey, I'm ready. I've made my changes. Go ahead and deploy this. I'm not going to deploy this yet because we need to set up a few things for this to work first. If you go over to overview, you will see that we have some installed add-ons, dyno info, and collaborator activity here. Um, so what I want to do is configure some add-ons. So if I want to go into add-ons, um, I want to find an add-on that I can go ahead and add to this. So I'm going to go ahead and look for Heroku Postgres. So I'm going to choose that. And now what it's going to ask is, OK, by choosing one of these, this is what we are going to go ahead and add to this particular project. In this case, I'm just choosing the hobby dev, which is free at this point. Now remember, when this goes away, basic will probably be the only option here, which is up to $9 a month, right? So that'd be a good place to start if this is just kind of a hobby project. I'm gonna choose free, submit order form. 
All right, and then I'll come in here and we have this um, attach as database and we'll say yes. And now it'll basically install this as an add-on. So now we have this database that is a part of our application. Now, if we go over to our settings and we reveal our config bars, we'll see that we have this database URL and it gives us this URL. Um, well, that's great. Uh, we have our own settings that we need to set up, right? We have all of those environment variables that we've created in our uh, production YAML configuration file. And those are the ones we need to set up. So I'm actually going to set those up. But to do that, I need to go back and get that database. So let's go over to resources. Let's go over here. And now it's going to give us information about that database. Okay, so here we are, we have that database. We can go into settings here and then we can go to database credentials. So we're gonna view our credentials and this is all the information I need. So now we're gonna to have to line that up with whatever we have in application-prod-yaml. So we're gonna need a DB host, DB port, and DB name. So let's start there. So I'm gonna come back here and go into settings and in config bars, I'm gonna say DB host and that DB host is going to be this. So we'll add, and then again, just to make sure we're getting the right ones here, we're gonna say DB port. This should be 5432, it is. That is the default port for Postgres. And we're gonna say add. Um, the next is the prod DB name. So let's go ahead and add that as a setting. And then we'll copy whatever that DB name is here. And then finally, we'll need a username, prod DB username. And we'll get the username here. And finally, we'll just say prod DB password. And finally, we'll get that password here. So again, I'm going to delete this after we're done. Okay, and so that is all of the configuration I should need to do. So with the configuration set up for the database and our, we're set up here and under deploy, we should be able to go ahead and deploy it now. Just remember if you're doing this with another application, please make sure you have this system.properties lined up to with whatever we're, whatever you're using. So again, I'm using Java 17 here. So that's why I have the system properties, the java.runtime.version set to 17. So let's see if we've done everything correctly and let's go ahead and try to deploy this. Okay, so it says deployed to Heroku was successful. Again, you can kind of see uh, the process here. It went and got our GitHub code or went and got our code from GitHub. It built the master branch, it had a release phase and, phase and deployed to Heroku. So your app was successfully deployed. Let's go ahead and click view. Uh, again, if you've been following along, this is a good thing here because we have this white label error page. We don't have something set up for the root context, but if we go to slash API slash posts, we do have our post here. So this is our first blog post with the correct author and a couple of comments on it. Again, if you're new here, the way that we're getting this is we set the SQL init mode. That runs this schema, which adds a author, post, and comment table. And then here in the application, main application class, we have a command line runner for both dev and prod that will create a new author, create a new post, and add two comments to it. So that's how we get that default data in there. Again, this is not something you will do in production, but for this demo purpose to have something ready to go when we go ahead and launch it on a platform uh, works out well. So I think the takeaway from this is there isn't a lot that you have to do here in Heroku. They've made it extremely easy. And I've done this on other platforms where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it's very finicky. This just seems to work every time for me. They have a tried and tested platform. 
simple but powerful and then you can come in here and again you can check out your resources if you need to add other resources you can um, if you, you can come in and get metrics so you can uh, add a credit card here to install metrics to it you can get activity about what's going on you can have collaborators on this project and again there are some other settings that you can come in here and uh, kind of tweak so if you want an SSL if you want a specific domain name a custom domain name you can uh, which is great. So we get this nice um, custom, this this kind of uh, starter domain name, which allows other people to go ahead and view this uh, on the public internet, which again is great. We get that very tangible resource that we can pass around to someone to check out. So just a big fan of Heroku. They make, you know, they again, they're in the business of let, letting you worry about building apps and not focusing in on ops and that for me is that's my wheelhouse that's what i want to do i want to build an app i don't want to worry about having to configure all of this stuff so uh, big big fan of heroku uh, the pricing model is really good uh, just makes everything so easy worry about focusing on building your apps and not all the other stuff that's what heroku will give you so Hey, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, uh, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.